I'd like to talk today about dropback pass from stacks and bunches. And this is around the Shanahan tree. So this is about an 80 or so game cut up. These are all being pulled from from the uh, most of the 20 and 21 season. And this will be Rams, Niners, uh, mostly with a little bit of uh, Green Bay and possibly the Titans. So it's pretty dense, so I'm, I want to start right away with it. Uh, kind of talk about the format and how this goes. And I'm going to talk pieces of, of stacks, right? So like how I view the passing game is very split field-ish. Um, so you have a side and you have another side. So I'm going to try to break it up into sides as much as possible. So just going through this very first one is just um, – it's a good point here is is I'm not a uh, McVay, Shanahan cover band. Okay, so like the, the names are my own. The teaching is my own. Um, based off what I see off film, based off what I think is the best way of teaching these things, and I'll, I'll try to highlight the differences between what I know they're doing and what I'm talking about. So the very first two-man tag we're talking about is just chug, okay? And chug to me is a choice and a go. Now, once you get stacked, that go becomes a corner route, okay? Because you're trying to get to the same landmark that the go would get to. Uh, it's a very common, um, very common tag. Obviously, Cooper Cup has made this very popular, uh, but you could use it a ton of different ways. So just going over like the base format I'm going to use for this whole thing is uh, kind of up top looking, right? So what is chug, right? Chug is just a, it's a choice concept, okay? And what kind of flank is it? It's only run to a two-man uh, flank, right? So you have different flank options. You can go trips, uh, like X games with the back, two-man, all sorts of things like that. Uh, this timing is is for the quarterback perspective. What side is this, right? Is this a first look side or is it like a scan back to second look side, right? So this is obviously your first look side. So this timing will be first. Um, what is the what is the attack of this tag, right? So that this is a, an isolation tag. Uh, you can have curl flats, hook curls, deep floods, man picks. Like there's all sorts of different attacks. Okay, this one is obviously, obviously just a straight isolation tag. Okay, and this yards per play, we can see that this when when this was thrown, okay, so nothing backside. When this two-man concept was thrown, it averaged 7.8 yards per play. Okay, and these second numbers is how many times it was total called in my cutups. So this two-man tag was called 151 times total. It was thrown 91 times. So that means the other 60 times something else was thrown or was a sack or scramble or something like that. I think these numbers are important because you start to see there's a lot of tags that are called that just aren't thrown, right? And so you have to start evaluating, like, why are we calling this? Is it getting what we want out of it? This efficiency number is kind of like my own formula. It's it's yards per play times, like an EPA type thing. Uh, I'm very open. If anybody has a better way of, of measuring efficiency, please let me know. I think like the four yards per play thing is outdated because if you're averaging four yards per play, you're dead last in the country in a lot of stats. I don't like the uh, getting, you know, five yards on the first down and converting on second down because like if I'm calling this on second and two and I get three yards, that's not an efficient play to me. Right? I'm not calling this play to get three yards. So that's what kind of all these top rows are about. Okay, And we'll go over all these as we keep going. Uh, this top right is on these 91 throws, where was the ball targeted? So we can see, like, this is a crazy distribution of the choice runner getting targeted 89 times of the 91 times this was thrown. Okay, and the go here being the corner was thrown two times. Uh, something else, these numbers are not necessarily purely from stack. Okay, these numbers will be every time Chug was called. So it could be just a normal two-man flank, twins flank with a go and a choice, it could be running back, back. It could be, it, this is any time Chug was called, okay? Not necessarily just stack. We can see here, right? If this is if this is getting called, if Chug is getting called on 151 attempts, the choice was targeted 89 times, no matter what was back on the three-man side. Uh, the final portion here, and this is purely subjective. This is how I see it. These numbers are one through five, how good this play is, how good this tag is against each coverage, right? So real quick, running through the coverages. One to me is five-man pressure. 
cover one, one rat is obviously some sort of hole element. It could be like a, a lurking safety or it could be a, a linebacker. Okay, so it's a four-man rush with a, a rat or a hole player. Two is obviously spot drop two. These are all spot drop coverages, basically. So two, spot drop two, three, spot drop three, three fire, fire zones, bringing five, three deep, three under. Uh, quarters is quarters. Five to me, like I'm getting kind of saving-ish here. Five is main match halves. So they're running with uh, the two and three players, right? Wall, uh, they're wicking wall inside carry. That's how I'm calling that. Five mans, two man, six uh, to me for this purpose is uh, Ripley's match and two by two. So this is main match three. So Ripley's match in two by two and then like the skinny variation in three by one. Seven being main match quarters and a two man flank. I'm calling that bracket and a three man flank i'm calling that stubby right i understand there's 96 different versions of, of man match quarters but that's how i'm breaking it down for simplicity and then eight will only apply to full field concepts because that's quarter quarter halves with the halves going away from the nickel um last portion i'll talk about before i actually get to the play is all of these drawings are on a college field so the hashes are obviously wider and all that kind of stuff uh, most of the film is on an nfl field so i'll try to talk about the different landmarks as I go. All right. So actually talking about the play, chug, right? Choice and a go. So let's say we're in normal splits. We have a go route, the clear out, and then you have the, the choice runner. Uh, as soon as you become stack, the choice runner becomes the off the ball player, right? The stack adjustment here is the choice is the off the ball player. And instead of a go to get to that normal landmark you need in the go, the, the point guard point guy is running a corner. Corner is, uh, I would teach it exactly how you teach a normal corner. For us, it was always 12 yards, take your foot in the ground, uh, run out of bounds at 25 yards. Like I said, it's not super important here because the ball is more than likely not going there. The big uh, teaching here becomes the choice runner, okay? And this will show up uh, in a couple different plays. So once you get good at it, you can keep using it in different variations. Uh, so the choice runner here. We're going to outside stem. We're going to miss the snap by half a second, right? So delay to let the corner out in, out in front of you. You're going to delay. You're going to outside stem to stay in this uh, outs, uh, to stay in this corner's outside hip. And then at five yards, uh, this is where I'm a little different, right? At five yards, I am trying to run the slant. So the slant is the priority here. The slant is the explosive. The slant, uh, like the yards per play, is much higher on the slant, obviously. So how I term anytime you have multiple choices on a play is like we use unless teaching. So I want you to do something unless, right? So on a choice out, I want you to run a slant unless that is crowded. Okay, then run the out. That's how you teach it. Run the slant unless, right? So we want them in the, in the thought process coming off the ball and think I'm slant, 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 slant. I'm getting up to my five-yard landmark. I'm, I'm trying to run the slant. The slant's crowded. I'm now running the five-yard out. The caveat here, if both are covered, if I come up, I'm running a slant, no, out, no, then I can just sit right there in the in the uh right there in the little pocket. Okay. Um, so slant unless, out unless, if both are covered, then just sit at five yards. Look at these coverages real quick. Um, what do we really like this against? Okay, so this this play is really good against certain things. It's not very good against others, obviously. Love it against one. Uh let me talk about these grades real quick. I forgot to. So one through five is the grades. One through five is the grades on the right-hand side. So talking here. I should have covered that earlier, but it's fine. Uh, one being premier. So one is double posts, double posts into quarters. It is uh, a flood and a cover three. It's a man pick against the perfect man look, okay? So that's your premier look. Uh, a two is like a 10 to 12 yard gain uh, expected, right? So curl flag against three, um, here, I really like the choice route against man coverage with no rat, that kind of thing. A three is like we're neutral, right? So so think of a curl against press man, right? My corner is no better than uh, – or my receiver is no better than your corner and vice versa. There's no huge leverage discrepancies. A three is we are neutral, right? If we play this play um, ten times, you win five and I win five type thing. A four is bad leverage. Uh, think – uh curl flat into uh cover two right the play is not totally dead depending on how you how you teach it 
but we don't like it, right? We're, 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 we are in a bad spot. It's going to be a two yard average when we do that. We can survive the down. Okay. We can survive the down, but we're not super excited about that play call. A five is heinous. A five is slants into cover three, uh, uh, double slants into cover three, that type of world where we have no shot, right? There, there's no, there's no way we can get around it. No shot there. So, how I did this is I broke up these 90 or these 151 reps of chug and I looked at broke up into coverages. Can okay, I watch all the reps against one, all the reps against rat, all the reps against four, right? And that's how I kind of got these grades. So going down the right hand side, right? We really like this against one, right? You get the one on one matchup with no whole player. It's beautiful. That's what you want. It's our best player if we game plan it correctly against a nickel um, or whoever in off coverage, right? which is the reason we're doing these stacks is to break brackets, to get off coverage, that kind of thing. Uh, it's bad against rat. Cause now that guy can play outside leverage. Right. And funny you right into the rat. Uh, the, the two one, right. So cover two. Um, so like to think of this, you know, very zonish, right. You basically have one guy who's hitting all three zones. He's hitting the flat. He can hit the curl if he sits and he also can hit the hook. Right. So defensively, you're not going to get three over there, but you can get two. You can get two underneath guys to take this guy away, right? So you can go, uh, obviously, cloud. You're getting a flat guy, some sort of hook guy, right? Leaving the curl to make you throw the curl and get catch and tackle for five. Uh, same thing with, like, cover three, right? If this guy expands, the flat defender expands, you get this hook guy, uh, you'll still give up that curl window, okay? But uh, the thing about two is that I have one clip on here, is is this this could go up to like a, a, a two if you feel good about the quarterback seeing it and throwing the, the cover two hole shot. Okay, so there's a, a rep against uh, Stafford doing it against the Texans, I believe, on here. Um, but like I just don't feel super confident about the quarterback seeing it and hitting it in time. So that's to me, if I get cover two, I don't like this play because he's going to have to sit in between both of them and it's going to be a catch and tackle for four yards or whatever. Uh, not terrible. Uh, but four yards is not what we're looking for, right, in the year of 2023 football. Same thing with three. He's going to end up getting viced by the flat player and the hook player. Um, same concept, right? You're getting two underneath players on this one route. Uh, three fire zone It's the same thing as one, really. Um, you're able to clear out because you're doing a three-man tag over here of some sorts. Um, you're able to clear out the three player, and you're getting one-on-one -on -one with the, the two player. Uh, quarters. Uh, it could be super explosive. Uh, this one depends on the matchup. I think it's a good way to take it away defensively as well. If uh, if you don't want to commit two underneath players, if you feel good about your nickel, uh, staying inside out and forcing the out throw, right? I think it's a catch and tackle for five. The issue is if you drain, same thing with three fire zone, you drain the three player to this side uh, and he's able to win on the slant, which is the goal here offensively, then it's a catch and it's a big run, right? Because you drain the safeties and some sort of quarters. Take a look. Um, going through here, obviously, cloud, man match halves, not good. Uh, two man, uh, not good based off you should be inside leverage a lot of times. Um, this being essentially one rat, right? Uh, three match, ripless stuff being one rat is going to play at the same, right? You're going to get this extra whole guy over there. And then uh, brackets and stuff, you know, being okay, right? Same thing. If you're able to win inside, great. If not, you're forcing. This this long outside throw is probably not what you want. So to go through the film and how this thing is broken up is I try to, when I can, when I have enough plays, go down, straight down the list so we can kind of see how this thing's playing out against all those coverages. So first thing we're seeing against cover one, we're looking up top to the stack side. Don't worry about what's happening down here. I'll cover these tags later. We're getting pressure one. This is premier, right? You see him miss the snap count. That's what you want. when we say miss a snap count, let this guy clear out in front of you. You got to ride his outside hip and try to make the decision at five yards. Okay, obviously this guy's preventing it. Try to make the decision at five yards. We want to run the slant. Slant unless. Slant unless is the thinking. So QB, easy, three-step drop. Uh, I'm going chug the choice side. I'm going choice route to whatever the backside scan tag is, okay? Like I said, don't worry about this side later. We'll talk about all the different options you have to scan back into, timing-wise. But up top's always your first look. So if you see if we have a better ball here, it's even more explosive. But this is this is what you want against, one pressure. Uh, 
Uh, same thing looking down here, looking at this one rat variation. Here's why you don't like it against one rat or uh, cover six being ripped for this match. Is you get the slant one, but here's the issue with the whole player. All right, same thing. You see uh, Cup missed the snap count. Outside stem, stay on the outside hip, put the corner out. We're on the slant and left, okay? Receiver, don't worry about the whole player. And you're like, that's not going to be in your vision, right? You're not going to be able to see that realistically. You're winning off this player. You're running the slant unless he takes away the run the out. He doesn't take away to run the slant. We want to run the slant. Um, the issue is just going to be the whole player, right? And that's why this plays a four against the one rat type stuff. So here's your first look against the zone off. Here's two Tampa. Good job. Outside stemming. Uh, this stack in the NFL. So the stack in the NFL generally being the divide, being between the numbers and the um, the hash. In college, that relates to being on the uh, on the hash. So if you're in college or Texas, playing on the same field, Texas high school, you want to put this stack on the hash. Okay. Good job by Cup. See him miss the snap count. We're outside releasing to get in the outside hip of the corner runner. I'm running a slant. Can I run a slant? No. I'm running the out. Can I run the out? No. Okay, now I should sit right at that five-yard window. And you can see here, it's a good way to defensively take it away. Uh, offensively, if you feel good about that hole shot, that honey hole shot, you can take it. Um, we just were never good at UNC at, at, at really being able to see that thing. I think it's kind of hard to see in time. And so uh, that's covered, so you end up coming back down to whatever three-man scan you have down here. But you can see the cup decision, right? Slant, no, uh, flat, or uh, sorry, slant, no, out, no, stay at five. And that's how I would talk about it. I like that better than talking about making a three-way decision, all that kind of stuff. I like using the words unless, running slant unless, running out unless, right? You get some kind of the progression of how we want to think about this thing. Here's the whole shot. This is a fantastic rep here. I've seen against cover two. Same rep from cup, outside stem, slant, no, out, no. Got to sit it down. And then here's your 12 yards run out of bounds at 25-yard corner. Still a tight throw, especially to the field, man. That corner is able to play both of them to the field. We'll see a pick, uh, pick later. I don't love uh, flat high lows um, to the field, especially in college where that hash is much wider. If you're in the NFL and you got Stafford throwing it, you probably feel a little bit better about it. But defensively, I think two is a good call against this stuff, obviously. You put two flat guy or two uh underneath droppers on the on the on the choice, you feel good. Same, same thing. You're getting two uh underneath droppers on the choice here. Slant no. I got a hook guy coming out to me. Slant no, flat no, sit. And offensively, like this, you could feel okay about this. You could say, you know what, to me, that's a three, right? In the grading system. I kind of like that. That's a three. I'll take my five, move on. To me, like throwing the football for five yards just doesn't get me super excited, especially as like you have to teach this thing and then rep it a ton. Um, it's not awful. But if you're averaging five yards a pass, uh, you'll be uh, dead last by, by quite a way. So I'm not super excited about this. Uh, I'm not like canceling the play if I have to do this, but I'm not, I'm not, you know, banging the, the table to run this play if I'm getting a lot of three or cover two. You can survive the down, uh, but not fantastic. So here's a look at it empty with the back running it. The thought process is still the same because he, it's because he's inside the corner runner. Right, he now has the outside stem to get to the same location, right? We're trying to get to the outside hip of the corner runner. Um, because he is inside and he has to stem, he, you don't want to miss a snap count now, right? And we'll see this in the bunch choice in a little bit. If you're already outside of it and you can delay half a second and then go, once you're inside of it, there is no more delay because you have to catch back up. And he is now making the same exact decision um, that Cup is running, right? Same, same thing. You see Jimmy G doesn't like it, and he comes to the scan, which we will discuss this in a little bit. But same thing, right? You're putting a guy inside and outside the choice runner. 
Um, I'm not worried about this route at all, obviously, at the corner. All right, I feel good there. It's going to be a catch and tackle. I feel good defensively, I should say. It's going to be a catch and tackle um, for four or five yards. All right, if you can force the, the offense to, to go down the field four or five yards at a time, you'll, you'll win a lot of games. So here's a look at the obvious out cut, right? Can I run a slant? No. I'm running a slant unless it's crowded and they're on this, the out. This is where I think defensively, if you don't want to put two underneath droppers on it and you want to play quarters, I think this is a good way to do it, is just stick that two-player way inside of them and make him run the out. Like that, That's a long throw and catch for a, a five-yard gain, six-yard gain. You know, not terrible offensively um but not exactly what you want right you're trying to you're trying to win the slant you see if you're able to win on the slant there's nothing back underneath it another look at the outbreak here pretty obvious one nickels way inside uh can't run the slant so i'm running the out route So just one look at it out of the backfield. So you're kind of creating a stack here with a tight split X. Same thought process though, outside stem. Now it's get, from a running back perspective, it's going to be harder to get all the way to five yards uh, because if you're already five, six yards deep in the backfield, but you're telling them five and understanding um, that he's got outside stem, right the outside hip, and then he's probably only getting to two or three yards. Ran a lot of this type of stuff at UNC, okay, with the back. And if he if he ever got to two yards, you know, we're pretty happy. So here he's getting two yards past the line of scrimmage. That's probably where he'll be at. But you're getting to this, you're trying to get to the same relationship you would be. Uh, really like it here, right? From a, like a stem corner position to try to get just an extra rub. You really would love him to play over the top of it, and then you're on the slant back underneath. Really like it from the backfield when they're doing some sort of flood coverage. Okay, this is four poach. It could be like the three flood stuff. Anytime they're sending bodies this way, right? If they like weak rotate, anytime they're sending bodies this way, you love the one-on-one -on -one matchup backside. The same process, right? Like we want the slant. The slant is much more explosive. We will take the out. Um, we will take the sit, but the slant is what 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 we're searching for here. So cover three match, right? They stay matched on it down here, which I'd prefer, right? So that the point of stacks offensively is to do what? Is to back people off, right? Either in press to back them off or to to very literally get them out of the match stuff, right? To back them off and get them more into zone uh, concepts. They stay matched, which I think is a good decision, right? Uh, if you can stay matched, you want to stay matched, especially because there's not like huge pick games from these guys at a, like these two-man stacks. So I'd feel okay about staying matched. Uh, you can see the issue here offensively, right, is the whole player. This is just a fantastic job of working the second window behind the whole player. Like this is this is T-shape stuff. Um, this is not something I would depend on. Like, I'm not excited about game playing this against this coverage. Uh, this is a great job of playing football on the field and then hitting this thing behind the whole player on the slant. This is a great rep. Of making the play, we put you, we did not put you in a fantastic position as a play caller. Okay, but this is a great job of making us right. Right. And that's why they get paid a lot of money sometimes. C cup outside stem, trying to get to five yards. The guy's not letting you get to five, but you're you're gonna tell him to push it to five. Uh, I'm writing the slam unless he takes it away, he doesn't take it away. Beautiful. Find the second hole behind the whole player. All right, so talking about Butcher, Butcher being a but bunch choice for me. Ran a lot of stuff at UNC. It's very, it's the exact same teaching between these two players, the choice in the corner. But now you're just trying to um, get the mic out of there with the shallow route from the outside guy. At UNC, we always ran it with the choice runner being number three. 
Uh, most of these are the Rams cutups, okay? And and uh, they'll have Cup here running the choice, but most of them are with uh, the choice being from uh, number one in the bunch. So you just switch one and three. Three would then run the shallow, one running the choice. Uh, the shallow, I would teach it however you teach your shallows currently. Um, the big objective here is any sort of like split field coverage. You want to make sure to go at the mic and grab him and run underneath, right? So I've heard it called like a grab shallow and at an under shallow, um, that kind of thing. For me, there's no real big reason of changing how we run the shallows already. We're building to a depth of, of three to four yards and then running across the field. You can sit outside the backside tackle. Um, but if you if you ran more of the air raid shallow of like going through the defensive end heels, I would try to deepen that up to make sure you grab the mic, depending on, on, on who runs it. Uh, looking at the stats, right, it's back to the ISO. We only run this from trips. Obviously, it could be uh, uh, if you want to get fancy with it, you could do it with the back, like a, like a tight stack, ignore him and then have the back be the, the choice runner. That's something you could do. This is a, uh, a first look side, obviously. It's an ISO attack. Uh, the yards per play was lower than I would have expected it to be at 4.4. Uh, this was called 15 times on those 15 attempts. It was thrown 13 times with, uh, with actually like a pretty nice little uh, distribution of, of, of how it got there, okay? Um, very similar game plan process, right? We like it against one. We don't like against rat. It's gonna be all kind of the same stuff. Um, the difference here against quarters, you start to really like it, okay? Because you're getting the box check, right? The box check to me is the equivalent of a defensive coordinator going five down up front and getting, you know, the 5-0 man check, right? Everybody's searching that up defensively. Uh, if you show box on uh, film, right? Uh, heaven forbid you actually show like a nickel giving the box signal to somebody, right? Uh, those people just salivate, right? And you'll have 19 different box speakers that week. This one being a really good one, okay? Because now you... You grab the mic, the mic's out of there, and then you obviously you're gonna double team the corner, talking about box, and now you have the one on one against the neck who's outside leverage, uh, right? And the whole point of this is trying to throw the slant. So, a uh, long way to say quarters, it's awesome, and then you can see everything else here. Uh, two man, you actually have to clear everybody out. You could get inside leverage on that thing, and then uh, seven because you end up getting back into the box check a lot of times. So. These guys did throw, so they didn't run a corner. I would like to know why. They, sometimes they ran the corner, like the normal 25-yard corner, and other times they just ran the two fade. Um, and he would throw, the, he threw it twice, the two fade against man. He threw it obviously here. He likes his matchup, plays over, and then he threw it against Seattle to uh, Deshaun Jackson once. Stafford did. But you can see just how much we like this play against uh, one pressure or one without a rat. You drain everybody out. Uh, the teaching's the same from here, right? You got outside stem to get in the uh, outside hip or the corner or the fade runner. Then at five yards, you're running the slant unless. So that's all the same. Now you just have the shallow runner to drain any inside piece. With, uh, you know, different backside tags that the ball never got back to. So it doesn't particularly matter. Even at UNC... When we ran it, the ball hardly ever got backside. Um, curl flat, they were running a comeback here. Uh, it doesn't really matter because the ball is is staying front side. All right, should be back. Let me just make sure. 